Luke 17, Jesus said that as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. Now if you read Genesis 13 and 14, you will see that Lot was dwelling in the city of Sodom. Now what happened in the days of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah? They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they built it. In other words, normal life was taking place. Nobody had a care in the world. But then what happened? The same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone and destroyed them all. Jesus said that a similar experience is going to happen at the end times when the Son of Man is revealed in His second coming. So the question is, why did fire and brimstone destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? In Genesis 18, God Himself gives us an answer. The Lord says, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah were great and because their sin was grievous. I mean, if you read throughout the whole thing, if you read the whole story with Abraham and Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham was pleading God, pleading not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because Lot and his family were there. And God said that if there were only 10 people righteous living in those cities, he would not destroy them. But the sad reality is, not even 10 people were righteous living in those cities. Not even 10. So God had to destroy them with fire and brimstone. What was the most prominent sin that Sodom and Gomorrah was committing in those days? Jude 7 declares that Sodom and Gomorrah were committing sexual immoralities and perversions. The people of those cities were practicing homosexuality. This is where we get the word sodomy from. It's from Sodom. Now before we go any further, I know this might sound weird, but what does a house represent in the Bible? In the Old Testament, the house of David was later known as Solomon's temple and it was a place of worship. In Daniel 6, we find Daniel going inside of his house to kneel three times a day to pray to God. His house was a place of worship. And so, if you are a righteous man, your house is a place of worship, much like a church building. Now, quick question, was Lot a righteous man? 2 Peter 2 verse 7 says, God delivered Lot, who was just, a righteous man. So if Lot was a righteous man, then his house must have been a place of worship, much like a church building. Now in Genesis 19, there were two angels who came to rescue Lot. They were disguised as men came to rescue Lot from the fire and brimstone that God was about to send to those cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot invited them inside of his house, his place of worship. So then what happened after this? The men of those cities, both young and old, came knocking at the doors of Lot's house, wanting to defile the two angels who were disguised as men. Now think about this. Think about this for a second. Homosexuality were knocking at the doors of a place where righteous people worship. Think about that. Think about it. Is homosexuality prominent today? Is there homosexuality in our churches today? Is homosexuality knocking at the doors of our churches today? Same-sex marriages in our churches? I mean, think about it. What did Jesus say? As it were in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the day 
when the Son of Man is revealed. Now I have friends who are gay, whom I love, and I'm sure 100% that Jesus loves them too. As Christians, we shouldn't hate and condemn people because we too are sinners. We're all sinners. We're all screwed up, right? I mean, we can't go outside and picket signs that say, Jesus hates gay people, or you're going to hell, and this and that and the other. I mean, that wasn't even the example of Jesus. He hung out with the drunkards and the harlots. Why? Because he came to save. He came to show them love. His love, not our love. Our love is tainted. And that's the reason why a lot of people hate Christianity today. Because some of the Christians today, they don't even follow the teachings of Jesus. Some of the Christians today are more like modern day Pharisees. So we can't condemn people because we don't have the right to do so. All we can do is introduce people to Jesus so that they can be ready to meet Him, saved or not. Because by what is happening in our churches today, we know that Christ will be coming very, very soon.